Hello, I'm James. Welcome to Maths Kitchen. This is episode nine in my 20 week series, which is all about helping you to do as well as you possibly can in your maths GCSE exam. And this is a bit of an overview of the maths GCSE, a kind of a, a beginner's guide, everything you wanted to know, but were too afraid to ask. This is hopefully useful for you, hopefully useful for you if you're a parent as well. So I'm going to be talking about what the different grades mean, what's the difference between the higher and the foundation paper, all of that kind of stuff. So before I get into the main part of the video, I've got a quick question I'd be really interested to hear your answers to. And it is, if you've sought help for maths outside of school, so maybe you've used a tutor, maybe you've signed up for a website, something like that, what was the reason for that? So was it first of all to build confidence in maths, okay? Maybe you're lacking confidence in your maths ability. Was it to get that bit of kind of tailored help, that sort of one-to-one -one input from somebody? Was it because you're very anxious and worried about your maths? Or was it finally because you've got a particular grade that you're targeting? I really, really have to get that grade five. I really, really want that grade nine, or whatever it happens to be, okay? Obviously, it, it may well be a combination of those things, but which one is the most applicable to you? So first of all then, what's the difference between the foundation paper and the higher paper? Well, first of all, the most obvious thing is that the questions on the foundation paper are easier than the questions on the higher paper. But then the, the main big difference is the grades that you can get. So the foundation paper is for students who are going for a grade one up to grade five. And five is the highest mark you can get, the highest grade you can get on the foundation paper. And the higher paper is for students going for a grade four up to a grade nine. Although actually on the higher paper, if you just miss out on that grade four, you can still get a grade three, but really it's targeted at people going for a grade four up to a grade nine. So how can you choose which paper you're gonna do? Well, the truth is your school will have chosen for you. Your teachers will have used their expertise and their experience to put you in for the paper that they think is gonna give you the best possible results. Um, although the government do say, if th there are cases where you, know, you could do either, you could do the foundation or the higher. They say that if you're somebody that's going for a grade four, then probably the foundation is the most sensible paper for you to go for. Now, I just mentioned there's, there is this overlap because both papers have a grade four and a grade five. You could get that in the foundation or the higher. So there's an overlap in terms of the, the levels you can get, but there's also an overlap in terms of the questions. So the harder questions on the foundation paper will also appear in the higher paper. They will be the easier questions in the higher paper. Now, regardless of whether you do the foundation paper or the higher paper, you're going to have to do three exams and they are an hour and a half long each. One of them is a non-calculator exam where you can't use a calculator and then two of them are where you can use a calculator. So the government stipulate everything that needs to be covered in the maths GCSE exam, but the government don't directly set the exams. There are exam boards that do that and there are three main ones in England. That is Edexcel, AQA and OCR. Now, they are slightly different, but they are all covering that same content. So broadly speaking, they're pretty similar. There are slight differences in the way they tend to phrase questions and that kind of stuff. As you can see here, this is an example from the AQA paper, and they do this quite often where they, you've got a multiple choice question. Whereas Edexcel, for example, very rarely give you multiple choice questions like that. But in theory, all three examining boards are just as hard as each other and essentially cover the same content. So from a practical point of view, it doesn't really matter which exam board you're doing. And in any case, that's a decision that will have been made by your school. Let's talk about grades then. So the students that took their maths exams in 2017 were the first students to do it under the new nine to one grading system, whereas previously it had been, you know, A star, going down to G. And that was for maths, other subjects followed after that. So we're actually, we're a few years into this now, but I know some people uh, are still familiar with the old system. So it'd be useful to look at how those two things compare. You can see that on the screen there. And you can see there's not a direct translation between lots of the grades. So a four was what was previously a low grade C, but a five is what was previously a high grade C. So, you know, C is spanning those two things there. Five also goes into what was previously, you know, just the beginnings of a B as well, doesn't it? And then what was previously A and A star is now split up between a seven and an eight and a nine. So what's a pass then? Well, if you get any kind of grade in your maths GCSE, you've got yourself a maths GCSE, okay? So in that sense, 
anything is a pass. However, if you want to carry on studying um, beyond GCSE, uh, you know, sixth form or college or whatever, then a pass is considered a grade four. So what happens if you don't get that grade four? Well, the government do expect everyone who hasn't got a grade four to continue with maths in one form or another. So either retaking your GCSE, or if you're trying to gain a vocational qualification, um, doing an apprenticeship, something like that, it may well be that you end up doing a functional maths qualification. Um, or perhaps if you're doing an apprenticeship, sometimes they will have specific qualifications, you know, sort of new numeracy qualifications that you can take instead. So what sort of percentages of people get those different grades? How hard is it to get those different grades? Let's have a quick look at that now. So you can see that 98% of people get at least a grade one, so grade one or better. So in a school with 100 people in a year group, 98 of them are going to get at least a grade one. Around sort of 70 to 72, these, these are approximate numbers, but around 70 to 72 will get a grade four or better about 20% will get a grade seven or better, and about three and a half percent, about three or four people out of those hundred will end up getting a grade nine. So you can see pretty tricky to get a grade nine. You've got to be in that top few percentage. So what's that mean in terms of the exam? What sort of marks do you need to get in the exam to get those grades? Well, the truth is it's going to vary from year to year. So the, the figures I'm about to give you are approximate, but they will give you a good idea. So to get a grade nine, you're going to need to get probably somewhere between 80 and 85% of the questions in your exam correct. To get a grade seven, it's going to be in the 50s somewhere, you know, 50 to 57 typically. And then to get a grade five, well, if you're doing the higher paper, it's probably going to be high 20s to low 30s, something like that to get a grade five. Whereas if you're doing the foundation paper, you're going to need somewhere between 60 and 70% to get a grade five. Uh, to get a grade four in the higher paper, you need somewhere around 15% of the marks. Uh, but in the foundation paper, you need 50 to 60%. So if you're going for a grade four, you might look at that and think, you only need 15% on a higher paper. I'll just do the higher paper. That's much, much easier, much easier than having to get 50 to 60% on the foundation paper. And that does sound appealing, but don't forget the higher paper is that much harder. So in theory, getting 15% in the higher paper is going to be just as difficult, maybe in some regards even harder than getting 50 to 60% on that foundation paper. Just before I move on to the next thing, a quick reminder that if you're revising, if you're getting ready for your exam, then do go and visit my website, mathskitchen.com. Um, it has everything you need to help you succeed in your maths GCSE exam. I will leave a link to that in the description below. So the final thing then, the dates for the exams and that kind of stuff. Well, this is for 2020. So if you're watching this next year or in future years, go and have a look at Speak to Your School. They will know all of the dates and you've probably been told them already. So as I said earlier, regardless of which exam board you're doing, regardless of whether you're doing the foundation or the higher paper, you are going to have to do three exams and they are an hour and a half each. And if you're doing Edexcel or AQA, the first paper that you'll sit is the non-calculator paper. And then you've got two calculator papers after that. For OCR, it's the second paper that's the non-calculator paper. This year's dates, that's 2020. The first exam is on Tuesday, the 19th of May. And then you've got a good break over two weeks until the second exam, which is on Thursday, June the 4th. And then uh, you've got a few days the following week, Tuesday, June the 8th is the final exam. And then the final thing you'll want to know is when do you get your results? And that is August the 20th. So that's it. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any further questions, just leave them in the comments below. I do read them and I will answer them. Um, if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, please go and check those out. You can see links to those up there. Do, as I say, head over to mathskitchen.com. We've got you covered everything that you need there to help you succeed in your maths exam. Right. Good luck. Keep working, keep practicing, and I'll see you next week, week 10 in my 20 week series.